This week, instead of talking to you about a piece of history, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of historical pieces, starting with this. The Lee Enfield No. 4 rifle, the backbone of the British military in the Second World War. Now, you can forget everything that you see from the Commando comics. We weren't all jumping around like Clint Eastwood with MP40s. Nine out of ten British soldiers would be carrying this rifle. And that's what we mean by the backbone of the British military. It's a bolt-action rifle, which means every time I fire it, I have got to manually re-cock it and reload it before I can take aim and fire again. What you find is that we would train for the speed of fire with this. And this leads us to a rumour that was prevalent in the First World War, um, where we're using an earlier version of this weapon known as the SMLE, the short magazine Lee Enfield. And that rumour goes something like this, that all the Germans thought that every British Tommy was carrying a machine gun. And, well, frankly, I just don't buy it. And this is why. So the British Army has a thing called the Mad Minute, and that is basically however many shots you can get off in a minute as quickly as humanly possible. Now, the current world record for the Mad Minute with a bolt-action rifle currently stands at 39, and that was set in 2019 by Norwegian. Now, while he was using a bolt-action rifle, he wasn't using a Lee Enfield rifle, he was using a magazine-fed rifle, so it made his reloads an awful lot quicker. Back in the days of the First World War, the record stood at 36, so not too far removed from that. And how that would be reloaded is something like this. So you can see it takes about five seconds per reload to do each reload. So if we take that mad minute and 36 and we knock 10 seconds off for the two reloads that would be required to arrange that level of fire, then we get to around about 36 shots in 50 seconds, which is about a second and a quarter per shot. And that's going to give you a rhythm of fire that's something like this. Bang, 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 bang. Impressive rate of fire, absolutely impressive rate of fire. But I ask you, does that sound like a machine gun to you? It certainly doesn't to me. And that's doing it at the rate of the world record of 36. So if the best in the world at the time is making that sort of firing rate, which doesn't sound remotely like a machine gun, well, the average British Tommy in the average British trench isn't going to be keeping up that rate of fire either. So I think really this is just something that gets passed around the public at home to give them spirits and give them some pride in the army without it actually being measured up in truth. Okay, so it's really accurate rifle is this, as when quite a lot of rifles are, especially in the hands of a trained marksman. This is going to shoot accurately about 850 metres, which is quite a considerable distance. And it's really good for fighting down long streets or across open battlefields. Now, when you get into city by city and close quarters fighting, then you're going to be wanting more in the range of submachine guns, which we'll come to in a moment. But this for most of the battlefields and working your way up, the Bacage of the Normandy countryside is absolutely brilliant. And because it's basically just five or six moving parts within there, that there's less in there to get jammed. There's less in there to go wrong. It literally is just big bolts of metal moving with a firing pin on it, sending a bullet out the barrel. And because of this, it's incredibly reliable. As a result, Pretty much everybody that uses this absolutely loved it. And people swear by it now. And even when we're out and doing living history camps and World War II events and so forth, you will see people of a certain age that come past and just want to get reunited with an old friend. There's a real affection for this rifle. Its other great advantage, aside from the reliability as well, particularly over the top of the German rifle, is its ammunition capacity. So as we showed when you learnt, you load it like so and you've got these strip clips and they just slot into there and bash down like so and you would get two of those in there. Every cheeky British Tommy as well knows to put one round up the chamber just for good measure as well. So what that gives you is 11 shots between reloads which is a major advantage against the German K98 which only holds five. Because of this reliability and because of this ease of use the Lee Enfield rifle actually stays in service right up until the late 50s and the development of the SLR. 
some 10 to 15 years after the American military had delivered a perfectly functional self-loading rifle, we were still using the Enfield 303. And if you were a cadet, even as late as the 1980s, you would have trained with one of these. It really is an iconic weapon of the British military. And from the people that have used it, they consider it to be the finest weapon England has put in the field since the longbow. The 303 rifle. So, we've talked to you about the finest weapon England has put in the field since the longbow. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what, in my opinion, is the worst weapon England has put in the field since the longbow. I am talking about the Sten submachine gun. Now, this one here is a Mark V. This is a late model. Actually, by this time, they had worked quite a lot of the kinks out of it. Now, what makes this predominantly different from the rifle is, number one, it's fully automatic. So... You pull this back and that is now live when you pull the trigger this block will come down here on the spring connect with the firing pin force the round out of here and the blowback will force this back up and you'll just keep going backwards and forwards like so at a much higher rate of fire uh, until you run out of ammunition in the magazine or until it jams and this does jam an awful lot it is not a reliable weapon at all um, when the one of these was used in the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich and the first time that they pulled the trigger to gun him down in the street and it just jammed uh, and they ended up having to kill him with grenades instead. This is a remarkably unreliable weapon. Um, if only jamming was its main problem as well, um, but it isn't. Um, secondly, you're not really going to use this that much if you are left-handed because if I swap this around... And go to this camera up here okay whenever i'm shooting this the cartridges are going to come out of here and they're broadly going to get ejected back in this direction right into my face so if you're left-handed which is you know quite a large number of people you're still not going to be able to use this weapon safely thirdly let's take a look at the back of the weapon here and you can see that we've got this catch with the small kind of brass button on the back. And literally, that's the only thing that's holding the back of the gun on. So, as you can see, there's a lot of loose fittings in here. It rattles an awful lot. And there's a strong chance that the back of this is going to fall off. Which is why you're never going to see a good stand gunner doing that. And aiming down those sights. I don't know why they put sights on it. It's accurate to about 50 yards. There are muskets and Napoleonic rifles more accurate than this. Uh, but you've got a chance there that if the back falls off, the next round is going to just send everything back into your face. And possibly one of my just greatest errors that comes with this weapon is just the simple fact that although you've got this, brass, this metal butt plate on the back there that's just designed for hitting people over the head when you absolutely have to, you jolt this, it goes off. We have got countless, countless veteran testimonies of the accidental, nay, negligent discharge of a Sten just by going over a bump in the back of the truck and it's being not very well placed on safety. If you can have a look at this here, that is the level of safety catch that you've got. That's it, it's like Meccano. Now, there are people that love this. There are people that absolutely hate it. You know, a few years ago, we met veteran of the Merville Battery Raid, Fred Glover, sadly no longer with us. But he said, once you learn how to deal with all the various kinks of the Sten, that he actually really quite liked it. Um, on the other hand, you know, we've seen countless numbers of people at countless numbers of events that have gone, good Lord, I'd never pick up another one of those again. Um, they consider it to be an awful weapon. But it's two big advantages is... Number one, it uses nine millimeter ammunition, which is really handy because when it's used by paratroopers and things like that, they're behind enemy lines. Nine millimeter ammunition is German ammunition. So you can use anything that you've captured out of their MP40s, stick it in your own magazines, and you've got an ammunition resupply. And secondly, it's a remarkably cheap weapon. Pretty much about seven shillings and sixpence in some places to make a Mark II probably upwards of that to make a Mark V. But when you consider that this comes to it at a time when most of our equipment was sitting and rotting on Dunkirk Beach, 
we needed something that we could produce cheaply, quickly in our own factories and get back in the war. And this did it. So, a weapon we won the war despite being issued rather than because of the Sten gun. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.